Hello, everyone. I'm uh, kicking off a vlog called uh, Let Me Dan Splain, where I review Pitchfork reviews and assign a rating in the same likeness that uh, Pitchfork assigns a rating uh, one through, or I guess zero through 10 um, for an album. But um, I'll just be rating the, um, the review, not the album. Um, I'm still trying to decide exactly what this will look like. Um, I'm feeling like it's going to be something in the vein of like a QAnon style conspiracy, like um, info wars kind of thing. Like, you know, Pitchfork is conspiring to, you know, uh, push these artists to the forefront um, for whatever it means power. Um, so I will be um, exposing that as, you know, efficiently and uh, as brilliantly as like Alex Jones does um, throughout, but um, it's subject to change. Uh, I am kind of just uh, trying something new. So uh, uh, today's first episode, I will be um, reviewing the review of um, Ants From Up There, Black Country, New Roads, uh, newest record. Um, Let's see, it came out about a week or two ago and I've really enjoyed it. I think it'll be my one of my top uh, albums from the year. Um, it was released under interesting circumstances. Um, the lead singer, Isaac Wood, um, or I guess the band issued some kind of um, note uh, ahead of the release of the album saying that uh, Isaac was going to depart from the band. Um, they canceled their upcoming tour um, and it was not super specific. Um, it sound, it, it, and, and what I've seen from other people, it sounds like he just um, was depressed or um, being in the band um, exacerbated some kind of mental health issue um so yeah they put out a phenomenal record it got an 8.3 from pitchfork and he just kind of pulls this alpha move and and quits quits the band on top and uh cancels all the tours so um very interesting we'll see what comes out um if there's anything more or different from that sort of speculation um and um yeah, so I guess jumping in, the, the first line of this review, <clears throat> the Concord Jet, the Concord Jet, sorry, aeronautical disgrace, financial boondoggle, multinational embarrassment. Hell of a metaphor, though. Um, so, yeah, the link, there's a link on um, Concord, and it's to a, I, I did a, some research on this. Um, I had no idea really. Um, a type of jet that came out in the 90s or early aughts that was going to, you know, was set to totally redefine um, commercial um, air travel in um, the States or, or internationally. Um, and, you know, it was, uh, could get you to your destination like twice as fast. Um, and it was just this like marvel of, you know, aeronautical engineering. Um, and then uh, I don't remember exactly what the circumstances were, but there, were, there definitely was a, a crash and I think every passenger died. And then there were just other issues where, um, you know, the, I think it reached supersonic speed. So, you know, uh, the uh, effects on the ground was, was like breaking people's windows and um, the thing would get super hot. So there were just all these sort of um, like physical issues with it um and yeah so they it's kind of it was grounded after just a few years of flying and you know has never been seen again and so this concord uh is referred to multiple times throughout the album um you know the name of the album is ants from up there there's a picture of a um it's uh, a, a jet plane that looks like a 737 um, for their album art. So that's kind of the theme. And it seems like, uh, yeah, based on Isaac Sparks from the band and this kind of continual theme that, you know, I, uh, Isaac 
likens the band and and to to be the sort of concord um and you know i think at times he might refer to himself as the concord um that it's just sort of this brilliant and beautiful and you know def completely like um defying feat of of um yeah just a marvel right but it's it just because of um it, it it can't interact with the world like what makes it so amazing also makes it unable to interact with the world and so i think that's um how isaac kind of sees maybe himself as a musician and so it's it's a little bit of a um hubristic um metaphor i think because he's obviously like um yeah has a lot of confidence in himself to to claim to be you know the greatest uh commercial jet airliner to ever been created but um yeah it's uh it's an interesting very interesting metaphor um i think the review just kind of has a little uh aside i mean it has the opening sentence but um no real context and um yeah i think they could have spent a minute just kind of explaining i don't think anyone under 25 would know or like under 30 would know remember what the concord was um so yeah very interesting metaphor there's a lot of like 90s early aughts um sort of references in in his um letter of departure um he references Futurama um, and there's just a quote. So that's what things would have been like if I invented the thing longer, which uh, I, again, I don't watch Futurama, but um, I guess it's an invention by um, one of the like professor guy or whatever. And um, he regretted not inventing. Uh, it was an extended index finger. Um, it allows him to reach much further to press things than he would have um, with his normal hands. And so there's another recurring sort of metaphor of um, the, the clamps in this album and the previous album. And I guess that's another Futurama character who um, has like clamps and uh, everything he touches like is yeah it gets destroyed so i think that's again interesting metaphor is how isaac sees himself as um sort of both prolific but also um yeah unable to like touch and, and sort of be in this world in a way that allows him to exist in a healthy way um so yeah i think most of the album um is uh, yeah, I think the first read is it's some sort of breakup album, but then with given the um, same and him leaving, it becomes clear that it's more about his inability to be in the band. I think there's maybe a little bit of both and, and it might there might be some internal turmoil between him and another, um, you know, bandmate or something and maybe we'll find out. But um, yeah, so to this album or to this review now, um, Let's see. Um, um, yeah, so let's see. For uh, answer up there, introduce the band uh, for the first time. This intro lasts 54 seconds before banging right into what the band is called the best song we've ever written. Um, yeah, so I hopefully I don't get sued for copyright if I play a second of this. Um, wait, how do I do that? Um, share screen. No, 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 share screen. Advanced. Yeah, and then computer audio share. It's very um, this pop 
be like arcade fire, the height of their powers, they can multiple wins, and um, yeah, just a really fun um, thing. A little bit poppy, but also a little bit busy. Um, yeah. And then it kind of, I think this is maybe what they refer to as the best song they ever written. Which I, the last song. But yeah, you get a sense of just how many instruments, how poppy and kind of fun. Um, and though England is mine, I must leave it all behind. The war <laughs> is over. So yeah, it's this sort of like. They're all they're from England, and he's got this sort of like Morrissey, like Broadway, like uh, guy from Panic at the Disco who is like directing. It's very pruning, and uh, yeah. Let's see, I should go back to this. Um, yeah, I think the first line, although England is mine, is a reference to a Smith song, which the guy, I don't who even wrote this thing. Who's this, who's this guy? Um, Ian Cohen. Um, yeah, so he mentions that. Um, where my notes go? Okay, and then there's just sort of a inside baseball dick wagging contest sentence of just weird references to types of, you know, music that no one's really tracking with. Um, about arcade fire here um oh yeah there's a great line um the album's purest pop moment wood crooning she had billy eilish style moving to berlin for a little while during a song called goodwill hunting uh which i don't know if we really know why it's called goodwill hunting um but yeah i feel like that's to me that's like you know, a new type of girl kind of repurposing. Actually, yeah, again, keeping with the, um, I, he also uh, references Charlie XCX, another British person. So I think, um, yeah, a lot of British references, but obviously Billie Eilish is like a huge international pop star. Um, but yeah, the, I guess there's like a type of girl, I feel like who, um, you know, so I sort of repurposed the like goth thing, like the Phoebe Bridgers goth thing, like how every Enneagram 4 girl wants to be Phoebe Bridgers for Halloween. I feel like that's kind of what he's describing here, which is a, yeah, great, great little reference. Um, okay. More arcade fire stuff. He, yeah, I think he, he hits it right on the head um, where he, it's it's not the sound, but rather the spirit of adjacent masterpieces like In the Airplane Over the Sea, The Monitor, which I don't know what that one is, and Teens of Denial that extrapolates social and psychosexual turmoil to the scale of world wars, the kind that inspire painstaking genius annotations, long size of, they don't make them like this anymore. And also the recognition that we can only handle one of these things every six years or so, which is, amazing and just spot on like uh i would joke that you know i'll get drunk at dinner parties and contend that you know a certain like literally a song by car seat headrest from a different album other than teens of denial is like the best song of the last 10 years um and yeah there's just like that type of um like very modernist like internal turmoil that's just so vivid and real. Um, the, and I think, yeah, this is definitely in the camp of, 
of that. Um, so yeah, great, great reference there. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like there's some sort of there are all the songs are good. I think some of the there's a lot of metaphors and references, and some seem to be maybe less about you know his um, whatever yeah whatever it is mental health problems or his inability to just like interact with these his bandmates. Um, and then there's others that seem more like a straightforward like breakup song. Um, so there's this bread song where uh, I, I think the idea is that, you know, he doesn't want the breadcrumbs of his lover left in his bed or something. It didn't really work for me. Um, like you could just clean your sheets and like it go away. Um, I just, it's not really uh, something that's that profound, I think. Uh, very, maybe very British. I don't know. Just like bread based treats being a staple of um, being and interacting in just day to day life. Um, let's see. Um, Um, okay, I'm trying to explain it. So he's, his attempts to explain uh, by analogy results in absurdly incongruous and incredible dream dates. Um, Los Campesinos covering feels in, or Nick Cave is a real boy. So I think he's just trying to get at the sort of cross genre, um, you know, the big band, pop music meets sort of dark um, and these sort of like psychosexual inner turmoil things. Um, yeah, so I think my favorite song, the one that I will next say it's the best song in the last 10 years at drunken dinner parties is basketball shoes um so the 12 minute closer the remarkable basketball shoes is kind of a true love waits that's like a, a radiohead top five songs um uh black country new roads isaac wood era a song that's been spoken of with hush reverence by fans their bands early age final line um as the front man, a lover of the audience, and it sums up. So the line is, all I've been forms the drone. We sing the rest. Oh, your generous loan to me, your crippling interest. So just more of the um, sort of R&D on the Concord, all this effort. Um, and, you know, he, he is, I guess in this analogy, he is the Concord and the rest of the bandmates are, you know, the... Um, the money and resources that went into making it. Um, um, yeah, so I think that's the end of it. He kind of has a line about knowing how it all ends. There's nothing to detract from the joy. Black Country New Road, I've poured into ants from up there not when they spend every second reminding us of why we let ourselves get swept up in these beautifully doomed fantasies to begin with. And yeah, I mean, yes, but also I don't think maybe by the next time they make, you know, a record, he'll be behind and back in the band. They're all, I think they're all like 27 or something. Um, yeah. We, I don't think we really know the whole circumstances of his departure. Um, so it will be, interesting because I think this is like a phenomenal album that um yeah it's it seems like it could be hard to justify breaking up when you're you form something this amazing um but yeah of course he's got to take care of himself um let's see a few more comments I guess I was thinking about the title answer from up there obviously it's yeah from the perspective of the plane 
I don't know if that's supposed to be like a cynical thing. He's sort of this Concord and everyone else is, or they're just like puny ants or something. And um, yeah, he could have, they could have easily just called it Concord or, you know, who knows. Um, and then, yeah, I think more interesting is the album art is like, it's definitely not the Concord. It's a like 737 in a plastic bag that kind of res is resembling um, like, a, I don't know what you call it. Like when you have DNA evidence at a crime scene or something, you put things in bags and it looks like it's just like a piece of evidence hanging. And so like this plane is the evidence for the band for his turmoil for whatever. But yeah, it's just, it's interesting that it's not actually a Concord. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I'm going to assign a score now. I think, um, yeah, this is a well-written, um, review. It touches all the good points. Um, Arcade Fire, the Radiohead nod, uh, car seat headrest and, um, neutral milk. Um, yeah, just, I think he pulled sort of the best parts of the album that were worth highlighting. I think he could have done a little bit better job of impress, like giving the history and background of the Concord. And um, yeah, I think I just sort of found through other avenues, the sort of Futurama reference, uh, which, yeah, I, I don't really know if that shows like good or like respected critically. I never like got into it um, kind of, yeah, it seems a little bit, like lowbrow in, in like a not um, redeeming way. Um, and they have quite a few, like in the breakup letter, the only, they have a quote from like a cartoon character, which seems a little bit like childish, I guess. But again, I don't really know what Futurama stands for, like what kind of, you know, fan base they have. So anyway, I'll give him the same rating that he gave to this album, 8.4. I think this could have been like a nine something. His rating could have been like a nine something. This is like very unique. And I think just under the circumstances, very interesting. Um, yeah, I think all the songs are great. I think some of the like metaphors and analogies in the record don't work, but the songs are still great. Um, so yeah, I think that will do it for this first episode. Um, yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys next time.